Let's raise up your hands where they are. Father, in the name of the Son, Jesus Christ, I pray. That's why I told you that there are two types of money. There is evil money, and then there is holy money. Oh, oh okay. You're, 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 you're crazy. You're getting it. You can have the Holy Spirit without money. I told God, I will not going to have your Holy Spirit alone. I will have your Holy Spirit and I will also have your Holy Man. Are oh, you not hearing? <laughs> there is evil man out there. Everybody, have you heard this? Everybody is talking about evil money, bloody money, bloody God, blood diamond. Nobody is talking about holy money, holy God, holy diamond. Well, we don't belong there. We belong in the kingdom. Oh, come on. Hear me. Anointing without money is annoying. Trust me, poverty can mess you up. If, no matter how born again you are, if you are poor, poverty can what? Can mess you up. So the Bible, now let's, let's go there. So the Bible speaks of who you are first. Before we talk about the man, let's talk about who you are. So God made you to dominate. Hello? God made you to do what? Dominate. dominate. Now, eventually as years we are going, people had to do an, a medium of exchange. In those days, people would exchange if you have a cow and this one has land. They would exchange. Hello? Eventually, during the Stone Age, people began to discover gold. And they began to exchange God with the certain things. Eventually, they said, wait a minute. We cannot have God walk with God at 10 kgs. No. Let us create a document. So they formed a document. So this document could be traded instead of God. So you would come and say, I have God. You have God? Yes. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, where the, where's the document? So this document was certified by your government that indeed you have God. And your God could be kept by the government. So I would give you land and take the what? The document. So this document was being traded. And eventually, this document is what eventually they turned it into money. In other words, the whole world right now what is being used as power of dominance is money. I just want you to hear this. It is what? Money. It is money. This is why the church must really know about money. You must understand about money. It's so, it's so sad to see the people in the world know money more than people in the church. One time when I was praying to God, I said, God, I want to know about the money because I don't want to be dominated and controlled by money. He said, son, people who have understood the money, they have not understood the money as money. They have understood the money as a game. So they have mastered that game. Just like you see chess is how they see money. So there will be moments when during that game, you will seem like you are losing. But you don't give up on chess. You can turn events around and checkmate your opponent. Proper. So people who have understood the money, they have understood the money as a what? Well, people who don't know money, the moment they see that they're losing, they ah, you know what? I'm giving up. But before we even go there, I want you to see the value. So the value came from documents. So this document today, it is known as money. Now what happens is in the reserve bank of every country, there are reserves. These reserves could be gold, oil, or any other natural resource. The moment those reserves are being depleted, your money loses value. Why? That paper called the money, it is being leveraged by what is in the reserve. 
So the moment what's in the reserve is going down, your money also loses what? Value. The more your reserves are getting resources, the more that paper gains value. Now, what backs dollar is gold. Natural resources. What backs pounds is gold. So I want you to get this because this is where most believers are failing and they are praying, crying, and no money is coming because you do not know first who you are and what money is. You cannot pray for something you don't even know. So, the Bible says you cannot save money and a God at the very same time. So Jesus compared God with what? With money. So there are people who actually worship money. And there are people who worship God. As if it's not enough, we read the scripture. The Bible says money answers all things. The Bible says that. No one is written the Bible as being an answer until money is mentioned. That the money answers all things. I told you that this is why you will not see billionaires coming to say, I've come here for prayer. Because they, they have an answer to every prayer point that they, they're looking for. Answer all things. Money. That's why it's so dangerous. That's why Jesus said you can't save the two. Because most of you, the day you will have money, you will stop praying. Because you have all the answers that you need. Like, oh, why should I even pray? You have $10 million in your house. And everything you want, you have it. If your child is just feeling uh, uh, some signs of flu, you fly your child to Japan for checkup. <laughs> I'm telling you. But right now, your serious disease, you come here for prayer. Very serious. <laughs> Ecclesiastes 10 verse 19. It says, but money answers. Read there. But what? But money answers all things. But money answers all things. A feast is made for laughter and the wine makes meal. But, but money answers. Right now, when you have serious pneumonia, Major one, please, I need a prayer. <laughs> but when you have money, just a little flu, I think I need, I need a checkup in, in Indonesia. You've been the next flight, you're going to take it. Money? It does not question. Money answers. I'm telling you. If you have money now, and you say, I need a chicken, man will say, yes, sir. If you go in the plane and you say, I need a business class, the man will say, yes, sir. Go, go there. Man, that's not a question. But if you are poor, if you go there and say, you want business class, they will be like, how? <laughs> and they will call police. So the Bible says, man answers what? That's why the devil knows that the moment God's people will have money, they will have all the answers they are praying for. And the devil will block money more than anything else from coming to you. Because he knows if she gets money, she will have all the prayer requests she has been praying for. That's why we have people today who are praying every day. No answer because the devil blocks your money. Because he knows once your money will come, you are gone. So having this level of people saying they are as long as you see, I heard people somebody say, you know, this nowadays pastors they just preach about prosperity. What, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? Is this prosperity gospel? No, it isn't. It's just the sound doctrine. God made us to control things. I don't preach to be controlled. Come on. Do you want to money control people in the church? No. no, we control things. Are you here, right? Now, I want you to understand who you are. 
So, so money is backed by a document that has got a reserve as a leverage. Do you understand that? So when you understand leveraging, how money backs up, what backs that paper is something in the reserve and it's called a God. I'm going somewhere right now that I want you to hear. In Haggai 2, verse 7, huh, the Bible says what? Let's, let's, go verse, let's go verse 8 first. Let's go verse 8. It says what? The silver is mine and the gold is mine, says the Lord of hosts. Who's saying that? The Lord of hosts. Now, when I tell you that, that God is, is, uh, is, is for God, silver is for God, and somebody has a problem with that, it's that person who has a problem. Listen, God is mine, silver is mine. And these are things that are controlling the economy. Every economy is backed by God, which belongs to God. Now, if God is the spirit, it means even God is a spirit. God is so spiritual. Silver is very spiritual because the one who owns them is spiritual. That's why money is so spiritual. And this is why there is nothing, uh, you cannot have money without a covenant. You got your own bank, your own account. They will say sign here. There must be a covenant. Now I'm saying the truth. You have to sign it somewhere. And the one giving you money also in the bank has to what? To sign. And that's a covenant. What is a covenant? An agreement of two. So money is so spiritual. It only listens to covenants. This is why people in the demonic world, they do rituals. To get the money. And this is why Jesus, the Bible says what? He became poor. So that through his poverty, we may become what? The Bible says that. So Jesus, the Bible says he had to become poor. So that through his poverty, we may become rich. Why? Because money is spiritual. So if you are so uh, physical, like just normal. And you say you want to get money. You want to get it. Because money listens to the spirit. It's either you are a member of it. Or you are blessed of it by God. There is no one neutral. It's either God is behind it. Or the devil is behind it. So you must know money is so spiritual. That's why people who do not have money, they are called poor. And poverty is a spirit. That's why I told you that even in poverty, much as money has got geography, there is also poverty has got what, what also? Geography. Geographical poverty. Have you noticed if you're in town and you're driving out, You'll be seeing that nice buildings are disappearing slowly. You are entering in a geographical. <laughs> it's like, trust you me. Poverty has got geography. The spirit of poverty has got places. Even in town, you drive another area. Nice houses. Just by the corner like this. Like, ah, where is this? Everyone in there has got a small house. Some even live in shacks. A lot of... like, What's going on over here? And people don't even open their eyes to see. Poverty has got a geography. If you are going to a home village, you'll be driving, you'll be living in nice buildings, then you'll be living in nice roads. They're disappearing. Ah, what's going on? And then before you know it, everything there is poor. Why am I saying this to you? This is what I'm saying to you. That time has come when you as a believer must, first of all, geographically know where money belongs. Where does money belong? The Bible says what? Silver is for God and God belongs to? Now imagine if silver belongs to God, God belongs to God, and you belong to God. It means you belong where silver belongs. God belongs. It's like God is your brother or your cousin. 
Because all of you, you belong to God. But as I'm talking today, there is no any God in your pocket. What I'm preaching to you, it is a, the gospel which most people will not preach. Because in the Bible, there are three doctrines. Uh, are you understanding? There's a doctrine of the kingdom of heaven. And there's a doctrine of what will happen on earth to God's people. And then there is a doctrine of after rapture. All these talk one thing. God's people to dominate. The Bible says after rapture, it says that Jesus will rule the earth with all the saints. For how many years? 1,000 years. And the Bible says we shall rule with him. So it has always been God's plan for you to rule. But the devil knowing that money can actually rule you, he makes money disappear from you so that you can bow to it. And he can control you. 